my booktube welcome to Jackie's Learn Corner and it's time for my August wrap up so let's talk about what I read in August um first I started out the month of August with Marcus Aurelius's meditations this was basically his diary on his thoughts and opinions on his thoughts and feelings and how he dealt with being in a position with power and keeping himself grounded, all the things he was taught growing up. Um, he, this was not, this was just his diary, so it wasn't, he did not intend it to be published, but of course it's history and someone probably discovered his diary and decided to publish it at some time. And, um... And it was very insightful, you know, and I do think some of these, his philosophical wonderings and his perspectives on things can apply, not just when you're in positions of leadership, but also in other ways in your life on how to deal with problems and how to deal with people that frustrate you and annoy you or people that you don't like, how to, you know, how to look at life and how to appreciate it and just live and just live your life. In you know learning to be patient and understanding and kind like uh, you know I mean oddly now of course some of the stuff is very specific to his situation um, and to that time period um, and some of it also made me kind of made me smile a little bit some of it I found very amusing as well and like he comes off as a very snarky sassy man I mean it could also just you know it could also be the people around him um, but this is the stuff he wrote down, so I'm assuming the snarkiness comes from him. Um, and I think it was a very insightful read. Um, worth checking out. Um, it's not the most exciting read. It's not a story or anything, but just, if you just want to get inside his head and learn how he thought about things, and like I said, I feel like some of the stuff could apply to any situation, any person's life. Um, not all of it, of course, but... And that was very good. And I, I'm glad I read it. I don't, um, I have to pay if I want to keep it or not because, but I mean, I don't know, maybe keep, maybe I should keep it to, you know, look back on it in the future or pass it on to someone else in my family. Um, like my nephews or my niece, if they're interested or I might not because I don't even know if I really would go back. I mean, like I said, I, I appreciate the thoughts and everything, but you know, it's also one of these things where you could probably find it on the internet as well. And I could also get it on my Kindle. So I'm, I might donate it, but like I said, just because I donate a book does not mean it's a bad book or I didn't like it. It's just, it's one that I don't know if I'll come back to or not. If I will actually take the time to look back on it or not. But it was still, it was still worth checking out. Worth reading. Okay. Next book is a bit of a longer book, but I was already halfway through this book. And that is my reread of Clash of Kings. I read the first two Song of Ice and Fire books, but then when I got into the show, I kind of ignored the books. I was like, oh, I can just watch the show. And I just wasn't motivated to read the books because I was just thinking, you know, again, I could just, I just watched the show. I had been meaning to reread the series. And a couple years ago, I read the first book, A Game of Thrones. And, um, and then I finally finished A Clash of Kings this, this year, this month. Um, and it was really good. Like, I, I struggle to review this book because I always struggle to review epic, big fantasy books because there's so much going on. There's so many characters. And if it's a series, you know, I don't know when I can and can't say in a review, like, what's acceptable, what's, what's too much. That's one of my biggest things about review in review is if I'm like, especially if it's a big story like this, I'm like, what is too much? What is too little? Um, but a lot is going on. You have several gentlemen, you know, men fighting to be king. You have all the Stark kids are separated um, in trying to survive in this world. Um, most of them are either trapped or on the run or thrust in this new responsibility that they in, in new roles they have to take on. Um, Danny is still coming closer to that part of this part of Westeros, but she's also experienced other cultures and learning more about her destiny. And um, the fact that I had watched the show, and I said this before that 
Um, it really helped me picture what was going on. Like, there's certain scenes, like the scene when she goes to that, I think it's like a temple place where she sees all those visions. Um, and I was trying to think, okay, what does this one mean? What is this one referring to? Because, of course, you know, I know what's going to happen in the books. I mean, so none of this is a surprise. I'm not figuring out as I go. Um, but I still think, even though, even though I've seen the show and know how things turn out, I think I can still enjoy the book, the series. Um, but just the way George R. R. Martin writes, it's, I mean, it's not, like, beautiful and flowery, but it's easy to get lost and be immersed in this world and in the story, and he does a lot of great world building, and, um, that's one of the similarities that him and Brandon, Brandon Sanderson do have. But I don't think a lot of people, I remember, because people are very worried that he's going to, George R. R. Martin is going to die before he finishes the series because he still hasn't published um, Winds of Winter. But I do believe he is working on it from what I've heard. And people were saying Brandon Sanderson, and no, I, I agree that would not work. I think someone more like Joe Abercrombie would, would fit more of his world. Or I know the guy, um, Stephen Erickson, is another person that people have thrown out there. And I think those two authors, from the little bit I've read of them, they would fit more than Brandon, Brandon, Sanderson, Brandon Sanderson. I think people only bring... Ah, sorry, I'm all tongue-tied. People are only saying Brandon Sanderson because he writes his own epic fantasy. And um, he's popular right now, so I think, oh, he should do it. It's like, no, his style and, you know, the type of stories he writes... Just, they're both epic, and he has a lot of details and cool ma- but his, the, he's not, like, his, um, his writing, his type of stories do not fit with George R. R. Martin, um, in this world, this particular world. But anyway, um, Stannis is so annoying. You know, I, I was reminded how annoying Stannis Baratheon is as a character, because he's just, like, like, you know, it's his way or the highway. He has to be this way. And he's, you know, he doesn't have, invite room for emotion and for complicated emotions. He just, you know, is very, it's me and it has to be this way. He's very strict and a very stern character and just, and just so annoying. Like, I, I don't think Renly would be a good king either. I think, I mean, I think he's likable. Like, they need someone that's between Stannis and Renly, as far as kings go. <laughs> someone that is likable and charming and charismatic, but still can be hard and tough and can lead an army and be a good king, an actual good king, and not like a spoiled child. Like, Mr. That I can, um, Joffrey, who's like, he's a, he's a child. Um... But, like, it's, you know, it's, I always, I really like the scenes the characters are, seeing how characters are resolving their situations, like, not just the quick thing, but we actually see the process of them resolve, figuring things out, and how to deal with this, and then there's consequences, and then there's wins, and, like, there's so many, it's just, it's so hard for me to pinpoint exactly what I love. It's just, I love the whole series overall, and I love so many characters, I mean, not all of them I love. But a lot of them, my feelings have evolved and changed throughout the series. And that's mostly, part, honestly, since I, you know, is I got to admit, is more to do with the TV series than the book series. But it's the same thing. So it's the same characters. There are just maybe some differences and some changes. But I'm enjoying these. Um, I will try to get to book three at least this winter. We'll see what happens, but, um, I had a good time with this. I'm trying to remember if I did, I don't know if I did an actual video review. I think I just did a um, written review of it. I don't know if I did a video one, but it is really fun. This is a really fun, enjoyable series. It's very dark, and there's lots, there is sexual content, and, you know, it's very adult story, and it's, like, a lot of shit happens to these kids, and they are very, they're a lot younger than the show, implies because the show is ca they're cast by older the kids are by older people older actors that are you know closer to their teens but they are very young and every time I read the series like 
every time I think about it, in the books they are very, a lot younger than the, you know, is shocking, you know, I, like, I forgot for how young they really are. Um, but yeah, this, again, I love this, and it's hard, you know, I don't know what else to say, this, I just love this series. Okay, then I read book two, Shadow of Night, the sequel to A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This was so much fun. Um, I really love this series. I will watch season two. Um, I might just wait until I get back home or I might wait until October. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm still trying to decide if I want to watch it in September or October. If I want to watch this, this season two. But, um... So our characters just kind of picks up right where the book, first book left off. Our characters have to go to Elizabeth, Elizabeth in England. They're trying to find Ashmole, the original Ashmole 782 and learn more about And they're also hoping to find Diana, a teacher, uh, her magic. And we meet some, we also meet some of um, uh, Matthew's friends and family, you know, um, like his father and his sister. And there, you know, there's a lot of complicated relationships that Matthew has. Like there, we meet Christopher Marlowe. I think they call. I think that's Kit, that's the same character as Kit. I was confused about that. I didn't know if Christopher Marlowe was Kit and Kit was Christopher Marlowe, or if Kit was a completely different character. But he was in love with Matthew, and it just he kind of, you know, he kind of like annoyed me and frustrated me because there was people that are like in love with the person. But they don't get them because they're with someone else. And then they decide to sabotage the other person that they're with. And it's like, why can't you be mature about this? Instead of, like, assuming, oh, this person is evil. I don't like them. We have to get rid of them because they're corrupting my the person I'm in love with's mind and everything. And you don't know that. I mean, in some in fantasy, there are some some situations where a person is actually if it's a fantasy or sci-fi story, there might the person might actually be evil. And but in reality, that's usually not the case. You know, you got to find get real proof and not just be all paranoid because you're in love with this person. This person. And, you're in love with that one person, but they're with someone else, and you think, oh, I can't have them, so that person must be evil, must be bad, and it's like, no, you, that's not how it works. So, Kit got on my nerves, and I, I, but I, I imagine it's realistic, and there are a lot of people who want to make excuses for that person that they're with, and think that they're bad, and, oh, I gotta get rid of them, because they're, like, resentful. Because, oh, I didn't get that person. That person didn't see me that way. So they must be the other, the person they are with. The ri My rival must be a bad person. Um, it's like, it makes it easier for you. And make your, you can make yourself the victim. Or the, the person saves you and they'll fall into your arms and all that. And it's, and I'm sure there are real people like that. But it doesn't make it any less frustrating and annoying when you have a character like that. Um, it was... It was really cool seeing Elizabeth Elizabeth in England. Um and I you know and girl is luck Diane is lucky she actually gets to go back to the past. She's a history buff and a history she studies history and she actually gets to see history in the making, which is really like is that's gonna be really cool. So it was really fun seeing that. And also we got to see some of the actual like Queen Elizabeth, Shakespeare, which is mentioned a lot, although we don't really get to interact with Shakespeare at all, which I think is kind of, you know, I don't mind that because it's kind of nice to get a story in Elizabeth in England where you don't automatically, you know, where they focus on other playwrights and other famous historical figures. I mean, we still had Queen Elizabeth who, she looked like a spoiled brat in this movie like and of course she's a queen so she can do whatever she wants she can get away with whatever she wants and it's um and diane matthew's relationship with her was very interesting as well very like there was affection there but she also was like you have to do what i tell you because you work for me i'm the queen um we also, of course, got to learn more about Diana's magic. We got to explore more magic. And, of course, magic is different in this time. And I really enjoyed meeting all these, the different witches 
that we got to meet that did all these different things and there was a bit of a and there was some introduction to familiars which I always thought that was a really cool idea the idea of a witch having a little pet that also kind of represents her magic um but there was a lot of cool interesting stuff they introduced in this book and, of course, we do find out more about Asheville 782 and what it relevance, what its relevance and get more details on why it's so important and why it has all the information each race thinks it has. Because it has. Um, but, yeah, this, a lot, it was so cool. And, um, you know, and I'm one of those people where, like, I, I just watched you know, um, Leanne's library books that she, where she thinks the adaptation is better. And that's fine. If that's, you know, she thinks the adaptations for this series are better, I get that. And although she does explain that it was more because of Diane as a character is really annoying, but I, part, I am, I'm always partly curious of what specifically, and she does talk about Diana is an annoying character when and it's from her perspective. So we are in her head a lot. And like I said, she didn't bother me. She Diana doesn't bother me, but I don't know, maybe because I'm maybe I'm like Diana. <laughs> Which is not a good sign for me, because people must find me because if I were a fictional character, maybe people find me annoying and whiny. If I'm, you know, I don't know if I am like her or not, but um But anyway, um and so I, I always partly wanna know why someone's you know, I want to know the actual reasons and not just because and, oh, it sucked or anything, but actually explain it in a very intelligent and less, like, oh, it sucked. It was horrible. Like, in a mature way, explain why. And she does. And she, you know, I get it. I don't, I admit I don't agree with it. But, um, but I just always, I always want to know. But then at the same time, I'm like, am I going to handle this maturely or not? Because I like something so much. That sometimes I feel protective of the source material and, but I also don't want to be the one of those people who can't, you know, except if someone doesn't love something as much as I do, like, um, but yeah, I have that always, of course, if it's something that I have an opinion on, then I'm always gonna, it's always gonna come to my mind. It's always gonna be on the forefront, on the forefront of my mind on the, the book. Um. But anyway, I'm really enjoying this series. I love this world, and it was kind of fun. I mean, I, I'm a Twilight. I was a Twilight girl. You know, I'm not a Twilight. As I always say, I'm not a Twilight, but I did enjoy Twilight. And I kind of like the host, too. You know? But as I've gotten older, I have realized the flaws in that series. But um, I personally think this is... But I personally love this series so far. I'm enjoying it, and I will be watching season either in September or October watch season two. I might wait until October. Well, although... Actually, September might be good because they could do kind of a witch theme in September. Um, anyway, so there's that. And then I read um, Lady Oddly Secret by Mizzy, my Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Um, and I thought this was good. I was definitely intrigued by the story. Um, you have this guy named Robert Oddly. His uncle, you know, well, first the story starts with his... His best friend George Halloys, his wife, he just, well, he's visiting Robert. He finds out his wife has just died. And so he's grieving her loss. And he hasn't been, they haven't been together. He's been traveling a lot. Um, and he does explain why he isn't there for his his wife and son. Because they have, they have a son who has been living with his grandfather. And... So, while he's grieving, Robert decides to take him to go visit his cousin and uncle. His cousin, Sir Michael, has just gotten married to this new young woman named, um, Lucy Graham, now Lucy Audley. And Alicia, the cousin, does not like her. She doesn't trust her. She thinks she's a spoiled brat and she's kind of dumb and thinks that, you know, and doesn't like that men are falling all over her and everything and thinks she's so beautiful and sweet and blah, blah, blah. And, um, she's also, Alicia's also in love with Robert, but he doesn't feel the same way about her. So then George ends up 
missing and he's Robert suspects he's dead and he starts to get suspicious of Lucy. He thinks she might be the culprit that had um that she did something to to George. So he decides to investigate and finds out some interesting things about Lucy the new Lucy on the new lady Lucy oddly. Um I was definitely intrigued. I, the investigation part where he was trying to figure out and didn't talk with these different people that knew her was intriguing. I definitely want to know what the deal was, who she was. And a lot of people have said in the past, oh, I figured it out. And I think I did start to figure out what, what her deal was and what her secret, as the title implies, was. Um, I did like the writing, but it did, you know, it did get kind of, I hate to say it, but there were times when it got kind of boring being in Robert's head all the time. Um, and I, I, towards the end, I, I finally just, I kind of cheated and looked at Sparknote. So I didn't technically read all of it. I didn't read to the end, but I looked at Sparknotes. So I, I know what happens. Um, and you know, I did get to the point where I do find out, you do find out Lady Oddly's secret what it is um although there was kind of an interesting twist there was a there was a bit of a twist towards the end a little bit of a surprise it wasn't a huge one but it was still like oh you know um Robert was okay as a main character I think sometimes he could be very oblivious and very and not very considerate of other people's feelings Lucy was just so fascinating. Like, on the one hand, I couldn't stand her. I hated her. I wanted to smack her. But on the other hand, I felt bad for her and understood why she was so desperate and why she did the things that she did. Um, Alicia got on my nerves sometimes, too. But other times, I also thought, I also kind of felt bad for her and liked her. Um, George was just kind of pathetic. And... Sir Michael was a bit of an idiot. He was, he just, again, he was also oblivious like his, like his nephew was. Um, and of course he does the thing when you're in love with someone and you refuse to believe anything bad about them, no matter what, you just, because you don't want to, you don't want anything, you don't want them to be the bad guy. You, you love them so much that you can't just see that maybe they're not that great. Um, and sometimes they're right. Maybe it's, you know, sometimes it might be true when you are right and that person is an innocent victim and the other person is just, you know, one is feeling protective and a little, like, and they might be paranoid. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I like the writing. I was intrigued enough to keep going, but I obviously didn't actually finish physically reading the book. I just looked at Spark Notes, what was going to happen towards the last section, at the end of the last section. Um, so this was okay. Um, I am going to donate it. So this is one of the donation donated books that books I'm going to donate back to either Givens or, um, back to Givens. It's like, it's one of those times where, you know, yeah, I don't, I know for a fact I don't plan on re reading this and it was generally just okay. Um, I'm glad I read it. It was one of those ones that had been sitting there for a while. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm definitely interested in trying more of Lady Elizabeth, um, Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I, I did just hear in a video, I booked two video I watched last night that mentioned a, another book by Braddon that even if you don't like Lady Audley's Secret, you might like that one. Um... So yeah, this was this was pretty good. Not great, not my favorite, not all time favorite, but still wasn't bad. Um, the last book I was able to read and finish was Sally Bowman's The Visitors, and I did do my a video review of this one, so you can check that out. Um, this was so this is my second Sally Bowman book, and I like her writing so far. You know, um, she's a good writer. Um, this one is set in the 1920s, mostly, you know, although it is one of those ones where a character's looking back on their past, um, and I don't know what time, what the time period is when she's looking back, but, um, it's about a young girl, also named Lucy, and, um, her mom just died of, 
typhoid, either tuberculosis or typhoid. I think typhoid. And she almost had, she did have it, but she survived it. And her dad is kind of a bit of a neglect and is more focused on his, his work as an Oxford professor. Um, he kind of abandons her and sends her to be taken, raised by this governess, Miss Mackenzie, who takes her to Egypt. And she becomes part of an archaeological dig of King Tut's tomb. But things are not things are not exactly what they seem with this whole tomb. And there are some questionable things that these archaeologists do. But she has mixed feelings about it because she kind of forms a relationship with some of these archaeologists. Um, kind of a bond. And she feels loyal. T and she, with her new friends feels loyalty to these people. So she has to keep the secret that they might, um, this discovery might have not been as, like, as moral as, you know, you would hope. Um, and it's just about her relationship with all these people and discovering King Tut's tomb and, um, like, it's, it was really cool, you know, again, this is another story that makes archaeology look probably a lot more fun and entertaining than it really is. Um, this is the closest I'm willing to go to Egypt, because I don't know if I would, as I said in that review, I don't know if I would ever be comfortable actually visiting Egypt. Um, but it, it was really cool exploring it in the 1920s, and I was inspired to watch the Mummy Mummy, the, um, the Brendan Fraser one. I have not watched the second one yet. But it was just, it was, it was really fun seeing all this and seeing these guys dig up this tomb and the relationships that these characters have with all these, you know, the kids and the adults and the, the sort of friendships that were formed. Um, and it, it was like, and you know, I felt really bad for the kids because they were being used for their skills and some of these archaeologists were all like only like Carter for instance were only wanted these kids were only friendly with these kids when they they knew that they could use them and that they had value and they could like they could help them in this archaeological dig um but it was just it was really fun if you like reading about you know, like stories about archaeology and discovering things, and archaeologists discovering things, and want to learn about, like, and like reading stories that take place in Egypt. Um, like I said, it's not like a, you know, Egyptian romance, or it's in the 20s, and, you know, um, but it was, it, it was really fun, um, I really, and I liked, again, I really liked Sally Bowman's writing style, um, and I thought it was kind of cool getting in the perspective of a child because kids see things very differently and their morals are a little more, are also very different. Like adults have, you know, gray areas and complicated feelings about things and sometimes they are, they can't, they're, they have potential to be a good person but they do things that are morally not great. And you have kids who are, you know, they're young, they're vulnerable, they see the world as black and white and they want to see the good in everybody and you know, but they also are very honest and see things clear more clearly than adults at times. And they understand things. The two may Lucy and then her new friend, um, um, see, okay, yeah, it doesn't say what the friend's name is. Um, Lucy. Oh, Francis. Lucy and her new friend Francis. They have very different views on the situation. So it was interesting to see their contrasting opinions. Like, in fact, I think Francis was even more loyal to these people, to these archaeologists, because her dad was an archaeologist and was involved in this dig. Um, and I, there is an author's note on the back that talks about the, the different historical figures. So I'm assuming that these archaeologists were real people. Um, like Howard Carter... There's the Lord Carnivore, um, and then Lord Carnivon, um, these, I all you know, there, it was just, it, it was a fun story, it was really fun, um, and I enjoyed it.
so I had a good reading month. Um, like I said, the only one that I wasn't 100% happy with was, um, Lady Audley Secret. Um, and it's hard for me to have an opinion on meditations because it was in, it's someone's personal thoughts. Um, I think it's worth the read, but it just depends on the kind of reader you are. Um, I'm currently reading Volkholt's, um, Pendulum, which right now I'm very... I'm very confused because you're getting we're getting a history lesson right now, and about the Templars. Now it really helps that I did read earlier this year. I read you know a book on the Templars and the Crusades and everything, so I'm a little more familiar with the the what they what the character is talking about, the history lesson, which I'm like, and I'm keeping it. Are we gonna get to the actual creation of the game that the that the back description refers to and then the mystery and everything but there are some books that just spend a lot of time with you know pre-setup before they get to that part um so anyway so that's the book i'm currently reading right now and um that is my wrap up for august um i would love to know what you have read in august feel free to share in the comments below um i will let you know if i've read them or not and um, if I'm curious, if they sound good to me, you know, if they sound like my kind of books. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and if you haven't already, please click the bell notification below if you want to be notified about my latest videos. And I hope you're enjoying your reading, and I will talk to you all later. Alright, bye!